failed multiple times to win definitely isn't something that easy to accept but the regret and sadness aren't the choices don't focus on the failure but focus on the purpose do your best make critic as stimulation to become stronger than ever answer all the scorn with achievement always remember not to let anyone else bring you down the real knights are those who get up and work hard Unite the spirit, unite our heart to reach our dreams. Always remember, result never betray the process. All night, let's rise and fight for Indonesia.
Pemirsa, we are now live from Indonesia, the Gorkerta Jaya, the home of the CLS Knights Indonesia, where tonight they are seeking for revenge against the Singapore Slingers. And tonight with me, Dion Edward acting as your host, and alongside of me is Ardo, is going to be our commentator. So Ardo, how important is this game for the home team, CLS Knights Indonesia? Uh, good evening, folks. Welcome back to the greatest stadium in all South Asia, Gorkerta Jaya. Um, revenge is said to be best served cold and there's no better way to serve this revenge game like the Singaporean Slingers with the coldest dish that the CLS Knights could do. They're at a losing streak of three games. They need to get back on the playoff race tonight. But with all the reshuffling of the roster that's been happening for the past few weeks, it's not even it's not even a week yet, they've been reshuffling and now they're ready to face against Singapore Slingers that they've lost to 77 to 80, um, to, to 80 to the last 81 game in their last game. And now they're back, and so they want to get this win back to get back on the playoff race. It is very, absolutely crucial. So just a reminder, folks, that last meeting against the Slingers, the Slingers beat them 77 to 66. And now we are looking on the league table, the statistic, the standings for the CLS Knights is now standing at the seventh place with one win, three losses. And the Singapore Slingers is sitting at the number four with two wins and three losses. It is it is not a wonder for the Eastern basketball, the returning ch reigning champions of the ABL. If you've been following the ABL since last year, they won championship last year. And it's their strong standing at 4-0 is no surprise there, especially with the new revamp of their roster. Um, and so, but what's surprising to me is Chang Sun Kung Fu, who is standing at 3-0 with the addition of the big man of the ex-Singaporean slinger, the other half of the X-Men, which is Justin Howard himself. And, and, and there's a factor in his presence that could lead the Kung Fu to be on the second seed right now with 3-0 on the very top. Standing on the top of the table is Hong Kong Eastern basketball team who beat the Singapore Slingers and the CLS Knights Indonesia at the same time with a devastating loss for the Knights in overtime. And in a few moments, we're just going to look at the highlights between the Hong Kong Eastern Long Lions against the CLS Knights Indonesia where they just beat them at the end of the game. <laughs> yes, it was a both close match between CLS Knights and Eastern, as well as Eastern versus Singaporean Slingers. They were fighting all the way to the end, even won in overtime. And it was a very crucial, crucial match at the, at the moment. And um, we're going to see some, some replays, if I'm not mistaken. All right. Are they going to find a victory tonight? trying to break their losing streak. We're just going to find out in a few moments. But we're talking about the CLS Knights Indonesia, where they're pretty good. They're playing pretty good basketball in these four games. And like this one against the Hong Kong Eastern Long Lions, the defending champions, as we can see in our screen. You can see this guy, Christian Stan Hardinger, just punished the CLS Knights especially in overtime. Oh, it was it was a 12-0 run by the Eastern. They had no chance, CLS Knights had no chance to come back. They were turning over, they were not rebounding, shots were not falling in. It was just over before the end of the overtime. And one thing that upset me the most is at the end of the buzzer, Freddie Lish almost makes the dying shot to make it a victory for the CLS Knights in Indonesia. <laughs> And it, it came down to the wire. The CLS Knights were was just holding on. They, they knew their gameplay. They kept it up-tempo, exactly how Coach Coco wanted it to, to happen. Uh, we're going to see some statistics uh, about the CLS Knights uh, coming into this game. Uh, last time they were back home in Gorkata Jaya. That's right, but the guy on your left screen, Ryan Williams, just recorded an ABL record with 32 rebounds. Man, that was a monster play by the CLS Knights Indonesia. Last game, lost to Hong Kong Eastern Long Lions. 
78 to 87 on the overtime, led by as much as 15 points. But you know what? Only made one basket in the overtime. So this guy recorded an a ABL record, 32 rebounds. Brian Williams, <laughs> he just keeps grinding inside, showing his power. That's exactly what we expect from Brian Williams as he comes in here as the former Beerman, San Miguel Beerman. Uh, they knew exactly what they were asking for in Brian Williams when they come into the CLS Knights. So this is the visiting team, the Singapore Slingers. Last game also lost to the Hong Kong Eastern Long Lions, 81-77. It's a close game also, but it's just not a good percentage shot from three-point line with 20%. But this guy, this man, man, this guy is my first pick on the <laughs> fantasy league <laughs> if I got a chance. You know, they, they should really make a fantasy ABL. I think we'll be the first one to sign up. And this guy is going to be my first pick, Xavier Alexander, Absolutely. Mr. Triple Double. This guy is very great. So, you know what, Ardo? We are going to begin the match in a few moments. All right. But let's move into the court because we are going to see the player introduction right now. Lepas topi-topinya, kita mau hormati, kita mau respect to the national anthem. The national anthem, Indonesia Raya.
Ladies and gentlemen, this is Singapore Slinger versus Jealous Knight, Indonesia. This is our home, this is our pride. Kita butuh energi tambahan dari Surabaya. Kita butuh energi tambahan dari Indonesia. Anthem of Indonesia. So, talking about the strategy of the CLS Nice Indonesia, but before that, we want to recognize the referee that is in charge tonight. That is Prida Pongsida from Thailand, and also Junard Garcia as acting as the umpire too. And crew chief in charge, Oe Shing Chang from Malaysia. So we're preparing to call out the starters from both teams tonight. Team in red, Singapore Slingers. Here's the man that is going to represent Singapore tonight with AJ Mandani, Xavier X-Man, Ryan Wright, who's at the forward center, Russell Lowe, who's taking also the also forward, and Larry Liu, who has uh, recently been added tonight. Where the Avengers, Avengers in the purple jersey is coming up on your screen in a few moments. They're trying to seek a revenge. You have to believe that tonight they are going to fight as hard as they can to break that losing streak, Ardo. Coach Neil Bengxiang is a very methodical uh, kind of coach. He's very intentional with how to lead his team. He, he doesn't just throw the ball at Xavier. And the last thing you want is to actually be fooled that you want to just focus on Xavier. But here comes the CLS Knights and they're starting five. This is the Avengers, as I told you before, Thor, Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, Freddy Lynch is acting as your forward, and Mario Wisa, Brian Williams, Sandy Kurniawan, and the new guy, the Corey Jones on forward. The Corey Jones, this man is uh, an international man. He's been everywhere, including Norway of last season. He's averaging 21.6 points, 74% of the free throw line. And here's Coach Coco Nugroho, the head man of this LCLS Knights squad. Here we go, folks. Starting of the last game this year is a match between the Knights against the Slingers. Freddie Lish, kind of slippery. Both teams struggling to find the ball. And Xavier Alexander is trying to make way inside. All right. Larry Liu also coming, starting for the Singapore Slingers. This is, this is his first time starting for the Slingers. Meanwhile, each team is still struggling to find a basket in this first quarter, this opening minute. You see that the energy of Mario Wisang, 38 years old, passes to the new signing, the Corey Jones still find it short. Zero for one, but oh, now the turnover back to Corey uh, by uh, the Slingers. Now they're going to give it back to Corey Jones and they push it to the side, and it's going to be Singapore ball. Slingers ball. So the referee calls it an out of bounds by the Corey Jones. Last touch by DC. AJ Mandani is trying to find the open guy in Xavier Alexander. Yeah, I'm, I'm just so worried about that slip up by Freddie Lish, aka Goldstein, in, the, in that first play. Uh, I wonder if somebody forgot to uh, clean up the court, but uh, looks like everything's fine. They're going to go back to it, and uh, if the referee says it's okay, then I guess everybody can go back to basketball. We don't need no more, uh, more injuries on this team. Oh. They're struggling with Drew Cruz now, but Brian Williams making a move inside again. Securing the offensive rebound yes. for easy two. You would think it's by accident that Brian Williams is hanging around the paint, but he's actually ready uh, for that tip back uh, in, in position for CLS Knight's first two, uh, two points. Remember, the record holder for 32 rebounds in one game. This guy right here, number 33, you will see him a lot on your TV screen, Brian Williams. Uh, here's the uh, replay on the attack by... Ryan Wright against Brian Williams for the first foul of the night. The crowd doesn't like that, Ardo. They're booing, and it works. Well, you see, um, CLS Knights, Knights Society here in Gorkartajaya are, are to be known to be the second most rambunctious crowd in all of ABL. Number one is probably Vietnam. 
but in only just four games in, you could, you could see here, folks, is if you're watching live right now on MNC Sports on video.com or live on YouTube, uh, you can see that the crowd does take effect to the amount of energy. Here comes Brian Williams at the top of the corner for three. You know what we call that? Moneyball. Money Moneyball has been given. And now it's the early lead by Nice. They're 5 and 0. Oh. Can Slingers get back here? Here comes at the top of the key with Ryan Wright. So Xavier Alexander from the baseline for two. Rebound by Mario. 38 years of legend. Passes to Freddie Lish. Also having a good game, Freddie. But unfortunately, he missed their last three-pointer of the last game against the Lions. Great job by the Corey Jones. Finding his mark, the first point in ABL for DC. The Chef Jones. And what you folks did not see was that as soon as they made that basket, Mario was in position to almost force a turnover on the Slingers. Slingers are overpowered by CLS Knight right now. And as we get a... First foul by the Slingers, I believe it's by X-Men, number 15. They need to be careful not to pick up quick fouls in this first quarter. <laughs> Freddy is a, good, a great guy to find a foul in, on the defender. Freddy is, is very good. He, he has very high IQ. He just seems to know when somebody's about to attack from the behind, especially in transition, when you're chasing behind him, he probably already knew you're coming in like two miles away. Predicted pass there by Sandy, trying to find Brian in the other corner to make the three, but the defender just can read the pass. Sandy Kurniawan is, is hailed as one of the top three-point shooters in all of ABL. Uh, unfortunately, if he's if those shots are not dropping, um, there's very little it can offer. So we're we're we're, we're excited to see what tonight's gonna is gonna bring for Sandy. So far, so good for this guy. Time expires. But Brian secures it for and, and one. And one, folks. Great start by the CLS Knights in Indonesia. <laughs> seven to zero with seven point lead. Is Williams gonna break his own record tonight? He's already collected three rebounds in my own count here. And as you guys can see in the rebound, he is defeating three slingers underneath the basket. Golden strong, don't care who's around, and he's going to ask for the three-point play, and he converts the N1. So Brian Williams played by with a sore ankle throughout the game against the Eastern Long Lions, and I believe that he still has some pain in his foot. But again, one more rebound, Brian. AJ Mandani, who's actually lights out from last game with the Eastern, collected 16 points, I believe. Or was it 19? And he was just lights out five to seven on the three-point line, and he's already zero for one on the night. And he goes to turnover. Xavier Daniels with the steal, AJ Mandani with the easy lay. The first basket by the Slingers. They're finally on the board. Mandani was all in position. That was good defense on top of the key by the Slingers, putting the pressure on both the center and the guard for the Knights. Again, they went to Brian Williams to find a way to score. Again, to the Corey Jones with eight seconds to shoot. Back to Freddie Lish. Four, three, two. They have to take the shot. And Freddie with the jumper for two. The jab stab by Freddie. The problem with a shooter that is as good as Freddie is that if you leave him too open, he's just gonna take that shot. And when you sag him on that defense, he just stepped back and puts it right in. He's one for one of the night. 10 points deficit. The home team is leading 12 to 2. And again, Sandy with a defensive rebound. Still, Freddy pushing the tempo with a great crossover and the layup. No basket. No basket. <laughs> Will be a crazy play by Freddy. Again, distracting the defender and forces a foul. I love the how they. I love how they, they give the tempo into Freddy's hand. And uh, the, the whole team is not even back on the, for the offense yet. But here comes another offensive rebound. Devory Jones with the offensive rebound. Another fresh shot clock for Freddy to penetrate inside. Brian from the top of the key. Oh. For the money. money ball. Money ball, the most by Williams. 
especially thinking about that shot before. And they never imagined that he, as the center of Knights, would ever take that shot, but they did. They need to know that they can't leave him open. Again, second foul. Brian Williams needs to be careful not to catch up quick fouls in this early of game. Looks like a substitution is going to be. A timeout oh, called time by Coach Coco. That's right. Two fouls, Ardo. This is a dangerous situation from Brian Williams. Yep. Should Co Coach Coco uh, sit him or just keep him on the court? Look, if, if you have any some sort of basketball IQ, we know that two points in the first quarter and uh, the first uh, two fouls. Not two fouls. Two right. fouls in the first quarter is never a good thing. And so, um, if I was Nugroha, I would definitely say, okay, Brian. Um, you need to just slow down and you need to sit down because if they're gonna pick on you because they know that you are easily taking the foul, um, you can't do this. And especially they're attacking the basket. They're giving to Ryan Wright. Uh, looks like slingers are going inside and it's working because it's forcing the Knights to take on that foul call. And it's not necessarily a good foul call because um, it's already been pen penetrated inside for Ryan Wright on that easy two, but now it's converted for a free throw. But he missed both of their uh, his first free throw tonight. But until now, with five minutes to go, the CLS Knight is still leading by 13 points. 15 for the Knights, two for the Slingers. This is exactly how Coach Nuguro wants to play. We we talk about his up-tempo up run and gun. Um, if you guys could show a replay of, of Freddie Lish on that last play when he's got a call. You could see that there were three knights behind Freddie. They were not even set up for the offense. But if they want to push the tempo, push the pace from the very early get-go, and maintain the lead just as they've done against the Formosa Dreamers back here on the second game of the ABL uh, when Formosa Dreamers was being hosted by the CLS Knights in Gorka Pajaya. You know, actually, there are thousands of people right here watching this, this team, especially for the Knights. But there's a special audience tonight for Xavier Alexander because his whole family is downstairs watching his son <laughs> play against the Knights. So it's the <laughs> best supporter that you can get. Your own family, his father, Steve, his, also his mother, and his son, Xavier II, is downstairs, the top, the center of left of your screen. He's there to is support it? Xavier. Uh, but you know, when you're away, and been traveling a lot in these games. Uh, you're traveling basically to eight different countries. And this is going to be a long season. And so when you have a family coming into an away game, I think that just helps so much with, uh, with this, just the morale of the team. And, you know, when, you, when you're traveling, especially the Eastern, they have their four game road trip in the beginning of the season. And what's amazing about it, I mean, just as reigning champions as sh should be, they're, t they're winning 4-0 and leading the season, this eighth season here in the NBL. As we can see right now, the Slingers is always trying to find a penetration inside, but that's a great two-point scores by Xavier Alexander with his mom and dad watching. <laughs> you know, I put in my notes here that uh, Xavier X-Men Alexander's game, that mid-range on top of the key is so dangerous. He's almost 55% from that area. <laughs> so if... The uh, CLS Knights would ever stop uh, Xavier. They got to stop him in the sweet spot, which is right above the key, on uh, top of the key there. Meanwhile, great skill of dribble, a hesitation, pull back jumper. Freddie Lish again is the answer for the Knights for scoring from three back to back. He missed. Go to Xavier Alexander. Brian Williams needs to watch out. Yeah and convert into two-point play. We were just off the timeout and we were wondering, is uh, Brian Williams going to continue playing and have two fouls in just under three minutes and 15 seconds of the first quarter? It looks like Brian Williams is still on the court and he wants to bring that energy that he always promised on this team. He missed that right-handed hook for two. Meanwhile, Xavier Alexander scores the last six points for the Singapore Slingers. To Corey Jones with a long rebound. <laughs> That's right. That energy is exactly what I expected of Corey Jones. While they're still waiting for Duke Cruz to recover from his 12-week uh, timetable, um, it's going to be a long time for him to come back. And so having Jones as part of the, of the squad here in CLS Knights, especially in their home crowd, the first win tonight is going to be so crucial, especially coming off that three-game losing streak.
Again, Xavier Alexander misses the jumper. Freddie Lish pushes in the transition to Brian. Sandy, the sniper for the money ball. You can guarantee that we, he will score a lot of money. Money ball galore. It is raining threes right now. They are shooting at over 45% from the, uh, from the tray. And the Slingers cannot figure out how to stop their shooters, the perimeter shooters. It's going to be a long night for them. So the crowd is very enthusiastic to support the Knights. And with the three coming from Sandy Kurniawan, it's enlightened them up. So 11 point deficit, Knights against the Slingers with two minutes, 16 seconds to go. Till the end of the first quarter. I personally can't wait for B-Boy to come into to the lineup. Um, he's not in the starting five for good reasons. He's supposed to add depth, as well as Rudy Lingana, who's the uh, previous PBA player that inspired the night squad tonight. The and shot clock is expired, Sardo. They didn't even realize that the clock is winding down and no shot for Singapore Slingers, so it's a turnover for them. Looks like we do have a substitution, and we finally have Rudy in the game now. And I think he's replacing Mario Wushan at the point. Dimariski, who didn't play again against the Lions, is now starting, oh, uh, sorry, sub being substituted inside for the CLS Knights Indonesia. Under two minutes to go, Ardo. What a shot. Bin with a three. And cuts the lead to eight points, eight points. for the Knights. Arifidu, uh, Rama Febri Utomo just loses the pass from Katon. Shooting fouls. No. Uh, an offensive foul no called by the referee. Foul. It's on Han Bin. After he made the three, now he made the fouls. Right. I was, I was just going to make the comment that it was not a good move. From was, Han Bin. It was not a good move by Utomo, actually. Okay. Um, I, I believe that he should have just let that one go, but instead... Looks like the, the referee sees like a contact from the offensive end, Han B, and instead the ball goes the other side for the CLS Knights. B boy still hasn't connect from three point line. And number two, 22, Honda Kelvin Lim tips the ball out of bounds. Knights ball. I would say B boy or England, uh, Ibrahim Inguio. I don't even know how to pronounce that. Ingyao. Ingyao. Yeah, it's difficult, man. Yes, that's why we like to just call him B-Boy. <laughs> He's, to me, B-Boy is kind of like the wingman that the CLS Knights need right now. Um, if they could ever match up to Xavier X-Men, it would have to be B-Boy. Under a minute to go, 50 seconds with 10 points for the Knights. Referee calls it a foul on Rama Febri Utomo on Xavier Alexander. 49 seconds. It's a good quarter for the Knights Indonesia, Ardo. It's a good start, but as you can see from Coach Negro, he's not backing down. He's not slowing down at all. They want to keep that push. They want to push that tempo, push that pace up as they go inside. And so far, they haven't been good inside the paint. They're only one of nine inside the paint for Slingers, and uh, they need to figure out how to, to get back, and looks like that outside shot is one way to do it. Again, the Han Bin is feeling so hard right now with two three-pointers. Meanwhile, Rudy just got blocked there. Xavier Alexander pushes the ball, trying to score to reduce the deficit. But a push there by number 22, Calvin Lim. You can see how the crowd is reacting to every single play, folks. If you could be out in Gorkertajaya, you would just know that these, these referees, they have to choose, am I going to fight against these Knights Society or am I going to actually call out things that are happening? But, of course, we could trust the uh, the professionals and the ABL referees. But Ten it is, seconds it to is, go, Ardo. It is this is the last possession right here for the Knights. They need to score this. What will Rudy do? Passes to Bima for the shot. Air ball. And that's the end of the first quarter for your CLS Knights 22. Visiting team Slingers, 15. But it's a great game, Ardo. Great game, great quarter, especially for B-Will, Ryan Williams, number 33. 
But remember, he already has two fouls. Two fouls, but after the timeout, it was enough for him to just wake himself up and understand that he can't just go in and, and just whack around. And so, as you can see the score now, folks, uh, if you're watching live on YouTube or on video.com or on MNC Sports if you're in Indonesia, we're going to see some highlights of the first quarter. As we can see, the play by play that led CLS Knights with seven points deficit. This is the go to guy for Singapore Slingers, Xavier Alexander. The crowd is really loud tonight. Sandy with the great three point. He's a great shooter, right? He's, Sandy. He's a sharpshooter. Um, he's a career 40. I believe 38%, so close to 40%. When he is red hot, he's just going to just toss that ball up in the air somehow. <laughs> it's just going to find inside the bucket. And uh, Slingers may need to readjust from their first quarter. They like to play inside, and having a wingman such as Xavier to, to, to begin their plays, they like to do lots of pick and rolls. Uh, if for my count, they've only done, uh, I believe, five pick and rolls uh, from the last quarter, and I don't know if they're going to increase the amount or make it less, but they like to go inside, and they might have to, to resort in shooting uh, for more perimeter as we begin the second quarter here. Especially when you're playing in front of your parents and your son, you have to play as hard as you can, just like Xavier played in the first quarter. Great defense by the CLS Knights. Defense will be the key for oh. the Knights, and they have to maintain it for the whole game. That's you why know. he bring the Corey Jones, replacing Evan Brock, to maintain their energy, stamina, the whole game through. I love how Coach Nugroho, when he mentioned about uh, Evan Brock, it wasn't about, hey, you know what? We don't like you. You should just not come back in our team. Coach Nugroho, he, he's, he's been quoted as saying, thank you, Evan Brock, for your contribution to our team for the past three games. And uh, he wishes him well in his, next, uh, in his next venture in basketball. We have to see from this guy, Rudy Linganai, playing at a point guard with a great pass inside. And one, Firman Dui Nugroho. Great play, great find by Rudy Linganai to Firman who finds the foul and trying to convert it into a three-point play for the Knights Indonesia, scoring their first basket in this second quarter. He makes it. Three-point play, Ardo. You know, one of the keys here in uh, the ABL is I've noticed that um, when you're not knocking down those charity strap shots, it seems you're not having the upper hand in the game. And they need to figure out how to get back. If they're going to go inside and get those free throws, they need to keep their free throw percentage up. As Xavier Alexander just kind of threw that ball <laughs> off, the, off the backboard. I think he was trying to attempt a dunk, but unsuccessful. And they're going to restart the play now at 14 seconds left on the shot clock. And we haven't barely made one minute on the second quarter here. The Slingers are trying to find their first basket. And they found it by Ryan Marshall. Ryan Wright. Sorry, Ryan Wright, number four for the Slingers. Without Brian Williams, they need to find another guy to plug in into the center and inside position. Ardo. Right. And when you have the, the, the depth of, uh, of Nugroho, I believe Nugroho does have a, a good solid presence uh, in, the middle, in the middle there. And even though he may not be as versatile and maybe a sharpshooter and um, a rim protector such as Brian Williams, you know, the, the break that Brian Williams could have maybe about four or five minutes into the quarter is going to have some great dividends when it comes to this whole game. I mean, it's a long, it's a long match. We're only in our second quarter here as we get a free open shot there. It's still no good. And it looks like loose it's going ball. to be a loose ball. And it's Slinger's still a ball. ball. Yep. So Rudy Lingana is playing also with B-Boy and Giao. Right, B -boy. Former PBA players. B-Boy, I'm really excited. 29 years old, 6'3", Indonesian, Filipino. He's the first Indonesian that's ever gone to the PBA. Wow. Ever. Quote, uh, uh, quote unquote. Yeah. <laughs> he's not playing for the national team, but he's formerly played with 
the PBA. Right. Saroni looking for a contact. Oh. The tension is going. So CLS Nice Indonesia basically playing their two local players, two big men, when Firman and Saroni is trying to face off against Ryan Wright. Asking for a timeout. Right, is asking Ryan. for a timeout. And the crowd is defending Saroni with booing. <laughs> so it's still 8 minutes, 48 seconds to be played in the second quarter. The CLS Knights still leading by 8 points. But the referee calls it a technical on Saroni. And number 17, Han Bin, has to make the technical free throws. Yeah, a little skirmish there in the middle. I, I, I believe they, they were just in so intensified. They, they want to win the paint. And if you could see from last from the last match that they had in, in November. If you remember from the last game that the Slingers went against the Knights, they had over, Slingers had over tw um, 22 points the bench compared to five points by the Knights. And so tonight they're going to see if, if the bench could really be deep and really contribute to the game for tonight's rematch, game two between Slingers and the Knights. Meantime, the Knights should be careful because they're already put on four fouls in this second quarter. So they need to be watch, they need to watch out. Still plenty of minutes played in the second quarter. They don't want to get in trouble with the foul, uh, foul count for the game. And when you're in a penalty, oh! Debo with nice steal to Mario. No look pass to the Corey Jones working inside. Still trapped by two guys. They call it a three seconds violation. This is three seconds. Yep. So the Corey Jones, I talked to him earlier that the Corey, what is your thing outside of basketball? <laughs> he told, what, what he told me, he told me that I like to cook. That's why I call him Chef Jones. And <laughs> it's funny that he loves to cook, but another interview that we've had on our CLS Nights uh, channel, uh, does he like spicy food? And he said he does not. <laughs> he loves soul food, that's what he tell me. I mean, how, how is he going to survive in Indonesia not <laughs> eating spicy food? Yeah, they need to put a lot of ketchup manis inside <laughs> their food. His food, Ardo. Well, First foul on uh, the quarry. Well, he's a chef, so he'll figure yeah. out how to dampen the... This, the spice of Indonesia. But for sure, the Corey Chef Jones is in the kitchen, so the kitchen is open for business. <laughs> but right now, Xavier Alexander again on the free throw line, trying to cut out the lead. Now it's five points, so it's a good quarter for the Singapore Slingers. They can cut it short till four points with this free throw, but Xavier Alexander misses the first one. Xavier is one for five on the night. This is not gonna, gonna do it for the Slingers if they're gonna ever fight back in the ninth in the second quarter. He scores six points in his in the first quarter for the Slingers. He missed both. He missed yeah, both he attempts both. at the charity strike. He is 0 for 2 for the quarter. He can still get back. And Slingers is, is one of the most, the biggest underdogs even though they've been in the league for quite a long time, everybody just seems to not like Singapore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, one, no one ever thinks that Singapore could ever make it. And yet last year, for two years in a row, two years in a row, they, they went to the, to the finals. <laughs> finals. And so, and, and what's amazing is that even in the absence of Justin Howard, they're still able to compete. And I know they're the 2-3 right now. But again, CLS Knights could not falter. They are at a losing streak of three, and they need to fight back tonight. So Freddie Lish makes his first free throw for the Knights. This guy has three passports. Can you believe that? <laughs> Got Israeli passport, Thailand passport, and, and US passport. And I think this is just for the ABL fans out there. If you're wondering, who's Freddie Lish? <laughs> he awfully looks like Goldstein. Well, the fact is, this is the same man, folks. This is the uh, the uh, the ex dragon of last year. He moved here in CLS Knights and. He's also known as Freddie Lish because of multiple passports. Yeah. And it's nothing that, you know, I used to think that he used to be called Freddie Licious. No, Freddie Lish. I, I, thought, I thought he'd be called Freddie Licious, but. <laughs> Unleash the Lish Unleash. of Freddie Lish. 
Unleash the leash. Fedelicious, Fedelicious Jones. <laughs> Meantime, a travel called for Brian Williams, and he just doesn't like the call. He didn't think it was it was correct. Maybe if we have the replay, we could see it again. But Brian Williams certainly did not like that call. But we're back and we're almost at seven minutes left in the second quarter here. Knights are leading by seven. Another point by three and rebound by Brian Williams again. Mario is on transition. Still haven't found a great game by Mario as he missed that layup. One-handed layup for Mario. That Remember, folks, he's 38 years old. AJ Mandani misses the three-point attempt. Ryan White get blocked without jumping by Brian Williams. AJ Mandani tried to die for the loose ball, but still, CLS Knights ball. Maybe you folks did not see it, but Brian Williams was surprised. No call was called. And um, there's a lot of skirmish going on under the paint right now. And see, and it looks like <laughs> Wright may have in, you know, accidentally tripped him. And that's why Brian is like, what is going on? And um, they might have to review that. I don't know how they're going to review that. Does ABL have a nope. review no, I don't in think so, Jersey? I don't. No, if I don't if think ABL so. would have a replay center. It's not like a football. No, but oh, replay center like yeah, the NBA. NBA, yeah, NBA, yeah, NBA yeah, has, yeah. has replay center. So if you were to vote tonight, where would the ABL <laughs> replay center be, man? With the internet that is not faster than 3G everywhere. I don't know if our Indonesians, the only ones, are still living on 3G. No, man. I, I, I have an American friend, and they're saying, like, they, they were confused when they come here. They buy, um, they actually buy Pulsa. They, they buy credits. <laughs> And they're wondering why the internet doesn't work. And then it turns out they were buying 3G credit and not oh. 4G credit. That's why the internet is so slow, right? <laughs> but not like the CLS Knights Indonesia who like to play it fast. Yep. 4G fast. Brian Williams. For sure, I thought it was going to be to go in. Well, he's a high percentage uh, deep, deep shooter. And Ryan Wright with the inside game against Brian Williams. Brian Williams does not want to take any chances. He's got two fouls already. That's why the Slingers always feed Ryan Wright inside, just trying to force Brian Williams to commit the foul. Right. Five minutes, 46 seconds on the halftime, the second quarter. The Knights is still leading by five, 27-22 by Brian Williams, who in the first quarter Remarkably, shots. He has like 11 points in the first quarter. 11 points, and that's because he is two for two out on the tray field, and he is one for one on the free throw. He is getting serious buckets. With also five rebounds in the first quarter for Brian Williams, but it looked like in the second quarter, Brian is just playing very carefully just trying to grab the rebound, not committing the fouls, just play it safe so he can play until the last the last minute of the game. And this shows the experience of Ryan Wright when he knows that he has the advantage on the inside. Um, not, not many people know that the post game is actually a lot to do with feet positioning. And so the, the, the key to a good post game is actually not the pass, not the receiving, but is when, where is your foot? on yeah. the ground when the pass is being made. And I, I, I did notice that Ryan Wright knew that he had the advantage over Brian Williams. He had the position, and Xavier being the high basketball IQ all-around wingman of the Slingers, three years in, this is his uh, junior year, I believe. Uh, he, I, I believe he's the face of the Slingers, and he knew the IQ. Ryan was in position, and gets it with easy bucket. Ryan Wright sitting at sixth position and stats leader with 14 rebounds a game. And he is in the first all stats leaders with two points made with 49 conversion. So you need to be you need to watch out for Ryan Wright. And some people even doubt that how can we improve on Justin Howard? Oh, how can we improve on Justin Howard, who's been so instrumental on the development of Slingers for the past couple of years? And and uh, they're wondering, is, has it been a downgrade or an upgrade for the Slingers? But so far, they've pretty much in integra integrated, integrated, uh, excuse me, integrated uh, Ryan Wright into the, to the fray. And uh, Alex, with, with that, 
Alexander with the easy two. That is his shot right there. The pull-up jumper from the mid-range. Slingers, three points deficit and makes it a single point from Ryan Wright. Slingers on a 5-0 run tonight. If, if Knights did not convert a basket here, we may see a continuation of that 5-0 run in the past, what, 40 seconds. It was a quick, quick attack by the Slingers. Freddie Lish made the mid-range jumper with four minutes, 28 seconds to go before we move on to the second half. The Knights still leading by three points, but it's a really close game. And I think Singapore is dominating this second quarter. I believe they are. Uh, they've, they've collected six rebounds in this quarter. Uh, they are cleaning up the glass, which is something that they did not do um, in the first quarter. And as Ryan Wright, again, that inside paint job uh, is getting some serious repainting for, for Gore Kartajai. So the first quarter, Xavier Alexander. The second quarter, Ryan Wright for the Slingers. Meantime, Freddie Lish is making the money. Moneyball Freddie Lish, a.k.a. Goldstein. <laughs> he took matters in his own hands. He's wondering, where's the rotation? Where's the, the cuts? Where are the, uh, the shuffles made by the Knights? There wasn't any, so he'd make his own shot. And I think that's one of the reasons why uh, Freddie will always be such a great player. When he cannot find a pull-up shot or the, uh, the open man, he will just make his own shot. And we see that tonight with that previous three point. Great defense by the Knights, the Corey Jones, Mario Wissan, and Freddy recognizing the block coming from behind. Passes to Mario for the Made. The crowd is electrified. <laughs> Finally, Mario Wissan scores the three points. With wish, three minutes to go. Wishang is part. Finally, the legend, Super Mario, is on the board. He was thinking, should I give that shot to Sandy? But he didn't. He wanted to see if he could make that shot. He was wide open. And I think the veteran knew what to do exactly. He had to take that shot, which was a good. That was a three to one run. And Freddie, look at that great IQ. He knew that he could not make that shot. Once again, he had to kick it back out. Uh, even at that moment, Mario had an option to give it to Sandy. Sandy, who is red hot right now, um, was that was was that a good sh was that a good decision by by Mario? It's a good decision when you make the shot, Bardo. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, at hindsight, we know it was a good decision, but I mean, you would think that maybe I should just give the ball away, but but Mario no. did it. What, what do you think? What do you think he did? 38 years old, uh, ABL champions. When you score. Mario will say, so Sandy, sorry, this is my time to shine. Let me take the money shot and convert it. This is my time. Co Row time. I, I want to point out, Coach Negroho has not sat down the whole quarter. He is intense. He knew how important to break this losing streak. And so he's talking to his men, to his guys, and he's saying, just run the ball. Run the ball. Do not wait. Don't relent. Get that energy. Force that turnover. Up tempo. Run, gun, run, gun. And we'll see you in three minutes at the half. And I'll tell you what else you must change. And you know what you will change? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. When you're leading by seven points, you shouldn't cha change anything. Okay. A miss. The quarry must be careful right there. Brian also, but oh. the referee calls it a foul. Is it on Brian? I believe it's Brian. Brian is emotionally right now. Three fouls. They call it Brian. Three fouls on Brian Williams. It's not a good situation for the Knights. No, it's not. Absolutely not. He makes the shot. A chance for a three-point play by Ryan Wright, number four for the Slingers in this charity stripes. The crowd is booing. Is it going to work? Not this time. Not this time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we got two minutes, 37 seconds left. Yep, but we haven't seen a lot from the Corey Jones this second quarter. Yeah, I'm surprised. Ready list for three in front of our eyes. 
And AJ Mandani push the tempo. Oh. Ryan Rye with the cleanup. He's cleaning up that glass, guys. They're collecting nine rebounds tonight. The two minutes, 21 seconds before we move on to the second half. Another substitution by Coach Coco, bringing Arif Hidayat. Looks, also. looks like it's going to be a major change, a major um, facelift for the CLS Knights. They're going to change up the whole starting five. I guess with two minutes left, they're going to see what the bench can bring. We haven't seen a lot, uh, not a lot of local players step up on this game. Only Sandy made the first three point, but not a productive game here for the local players for the Knights Indonesia. Okay, I'm excited for Rudy Lingana, 31 years old, 5'9", heritage import from the Philippines. Um, this is this is what they want him to do. They're going to add depth, and when Mario Wushang is not on the court, he needs to bring down and become the general, the floor general for the Knights as we are having a a call here on Caleb. Caleb is also a great offensive player for the Knights. He likes to penetrate inside, pushing the tempo, mm -hmm. drawing the fouls as he's going to make two free throws tonight. He first makes the first one with a friendly bounce for Caleb. I think it's notable to note that uh, Russell Lowe has become quite the rim protector. Their last match with the Eastern, he had collected three blocks. So he is making his presence known down in the middle. With two minutes to go on the second quarter, three points lead by the Knights. The Slingers, of course, trying to take over the lead before halftime. Almost all the local players is in the court besides this guy, Ryan wow. Wright. <laughs> Ryan Bradley Wright. This is his quarter. Rudy Ling and I, the latest signing from the CLS Knights Indonesia, trying to find the open man in Saroni. Played in the PBA. The last team that he played is for the Token Tech in the PBA. Of course, played with the Power 8 Tigers, Global Port, Batang Pierre, Kia Picanto, and Tieni Katropa. Rudy Lingana is a lot of experience in his shoulder. You know, I, I hate to admit that as soon as uh, import players are absent on the court, it, it seems like the, the strategy is always just push and push and give the ball to the import, knowing that on the other side, there are no imports guarding them. It's a one-point game. The Slingers, first time lead in this game. 37-36. <laughs> One minute to go. This is this is the uh, the first lead by the Slingers. We got a minute left. Can they bring in the the lead before the end of the half? Again, they go to Caleb for the floater. Cannot convert. They need to get back on defense. Again to Ryan Wright. Their solution this second quarter. They need to stop Ryan to secure the rebound. Number 70 for three, Han Bin. He misses again, Ryan Wright, but his foot touched the line. All right. Turnover, Slingers, CLS Knights basketball. 30 seconds to go, Ardo. They need to score if they want to bring the lead before the second half. Super Mario is back and he's gonna bring in the floor. I wonder what, what kind of play they're going to bring in today. Rama okay, Febri Utama finding Mario Wisa for three! For the money! money! He's filling it, Ardo is filling it. Two, Two three-pointers by Mario Wisa. Six seconds to go, five. Out of five seconds, they need to take the shots. Mario, his force is out of the bounds. They call it a foul. Is it a foul? It's a foul it's a on... Foul. Then uh, Larry Liu, number 11. Wow. With you know, one seconds to go, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, we see that Mario will a basket to a basket throw. here. Oh, oh, he's shooting. Okay, okay. Come on, Mario. 
crowd is silent. Yeah. They want to make sure that Mario is completely concentrated for the shot. With one second left, you could pretty much call this a uh, half done. But we have one more, uh, one one more shot here by Mario. One, one more, more second. Let's see what they can make from here. And he makes the second free throw with one second to go. Can Sing Slingers make this shot? A desperate shot. <laughs> Way back to the backboard. So, ladies and gentlemen, basketball fans, that's the end of the second quarter with the CLS Knights, the home team, is leading with three points, 40, with the Slingers, 37. So what do you think, Ardo? I am not as surprised as I thought I would be. The intensity by both teams have been good. I, I just wonder if Slingers are thinking way too much. But it wasn't until the second half of the second quarter when they begin to attack inside more efficiently. It helps not having Brian Williams to be present there. But having Nugroho and having Utomo there, it kind of alleviates some of that pressure inside. But um, as you can see, they they've somehow did not battle well on the paint. And so Ryan Wright took over the second half. I mean, 40 second quarter. for CLS Knights Indonesia, 37 for the Slingers. A lot of more action, basketball action that is coming up after this on the halftime. So don't go anywhere. Stay tuned.
Can you hear me? Check. 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 One, two, one, two. Check. 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 One, two, one, two. Check, Mike. Check, Mike. One, two, one, two. Check. Six minutes to go before we move on to the second half. This is the stats. CLS Knights Indonesia is leading by three points. It's a close game, as we can see in the game summary as you watch the screen. It's almost a tight game. It's a close game. It's interesting to me that there's more turnovers by the CLS Knights. And uh, I noticed that the rebounds, both on this game and the previous match that they had in the OCBC Arena, is that both of these teams are very high volume rebounders. And so the issue is not whether or not these two teams can rebound, the other factors is what comes in. You could see the contrast of the free throws that's happening, 75% of the CLS Knights. When they go in the middle, when they go in the charity stripe, you can pretty much guarantee that they'll make it in. Whereas the three point field goal percentage is amazing. Six out of 12, that's 50%. When you toss it up in the air, you have heads or tails yeah. to make it. Meantime, the Slingers only made two uh, from 10 attempts, 20%. So that's the key and the major factor for CLS Knights Indonesia to secure the lead at the halftime with 40 to 37. The three points is saving them. So they need to keep shooting at three pointers like Sandy's to find an open field to shot the game for three. And we can see also Mario Wiesang at the second quarter <laughs> yeah. with two three-pointers. Absolutely. I, 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 do, I do believe that when you are red hot from the three-point, six out of 12, you could pretty much guarantee that if you could just pick up this pace and continue to maintain this tempo, the rhythm is there. I, I believe that the rhythm is there for the CLS Knights. But what could the singers, Slingers do? I do believe that either they could begin to attack the basket because they've done that. In fact, to the point that Brian Williams had to sit down picking up his third foul. Uh, third foul. We're going to see some highlights from the first half if you just tuned in from YouTube, video.com or on MNC Sports. If you missed the game, this is the highlights for the first half between these two teams. 
Mario Wisang, as we can see, no look pass no to look Brian pass. in the corner for the money. Money ball. Yeah. <laughs> You know, Mario is just so good at that. He just knows where everybody is. Here's another great just step back by Freddie Lish, a.k.a. Goldstein, having a good game this, this two quarters. Ryan Wright just having one of the best quarter of his life in the second quarter for the Singapore Slingers. So right now we are moving on to our encore reporter, Killy G, with a special interview so off to you Kili thank you so much Dion hey everybody it's your girl Kili G as you all know CLS Knights has two new players Rudy and Decorey right now with me I have the general manager Ferry Ferry after seeing Rudy and Decorey perform in their first quarter and second quarter how satisfied were you I'm not satisfied yet with their the way they are playing right now but uh, give give them time though. I mean, Rudy just came in on Sunday, and then Decor is still adjusting with the system. But he was he was doing all around playing today, so that's all about. Yeah, I heard also Decor. It's his first time in the ABL. Yeah, Decor is new in the ABL. He was playing well with in Japan before, and then playing in a tournament, JP tournament in B, with BBM. So, do you have any words for them to hear here? Just keep keep on working hard. That's all. All right, guys, you heard it yourself. He wants the two new players to work hard. Rudy and Corey, we hope to see you perform better. Back to you, Dion. We haven't seen a lot of the Corey Jones, but uh, Ferry just told us that uh, they need to keep working hard. That that shows that the Corey Jones, maybe you cannot see it in the stats, but they, he keep hustling on defense, both sides of the court, offense and defense. The Corey Jones... It's a pretty good game for and, him. And that's exactly what he promised. When when he's fresh out of the Java Plus Honda Pro Tournament with the BABM Pontianak Warriors, they brought the championship. And so when they brought the championship, they knew that he has so much to bring. He has great stats from 2016 and in, in the Nados Jets of Norway. He marked at 21.6 points, 21.6 points, 74% from the free throw, 9.7 rebounds, 2.9 assists, and 1.7 steals. This man is the definition of versatility. This is exactly what CLS Knights need. Yeah, it's actually they're looking for a high energy guy and they got it on the Corey Jones. Sometimes in the field, I can see a resemblance with Duke Cruz. His long arms, long legs, and high energy plays on both sides of the court. The Corey Jones may be a great replacement for Evan Brock and for Duke Cruz. You know, uh, the conversation over and over again when it, when it comes to the, the two imports uh, Duke Cruz and now DeCorey Aaron Jones is intensity energy and, it, and if, if that's not being brought um, it's almost like why did Coco Nugroho even thought about having them around so um, at just uh, first half we're, we're halfway through this game and we could see that it is you know you know when when players are valuable off the stat sheet they're not real they don't they don't jump out on the stat sheet but they're right there to support you and to be there for you um, and to bring that energy. And again, the tempo of Nugroho's system is all about energy. If there is no energy, there is no win for CLS Knights tonight. All right, basketball fans, the third quarter, the beginning of the second half is going to begin in a few moments. Can the CLS Knights have their revenge against the Slingers who just beat them last month, 77 to 66 in OCBC Arena, now in front of their home crowd, they're trying to take the W. I'm curious to see what is the new starting five for the second half. Um, what's nice for Nugroho now is that when you have so much depth on your bench, you have so many options, and you have all these shooters like Uto uh, Utomo, Nugroho, uh, excuse me, not Nugroho, but you have Gamilang, and then you have, uh, of course, Sandy Kurniawan, who's shooting lights out. He's a sharp shooter. He's shooting, I believe, 38% tonight. He's made a few, but he's also uh, missed a few. But with those numbers, if you can contribute in those areas, you're going to see this win to go away very quickly for the CLS Knights. So the key player for the Knights is Freddie Lish with 11 points. Brian Williams also scored 11 points. So 13 seconds before we begin the third quarter, the beginning of the first half with CLS Knights will begin with the first possession. Freddie Lish inbound. We can hear the crowd is pumped. 
to support their home team, the CLS Knights Indonesia. A fancy play tried by Freddie Lish. It's a turnover. Great defense by Xavier Alexander, converting the turnover for an easy two points with a right-handed layup. What an impression by Slingers to begin the inbound of the quarter with its first or fourth turnover. And the CLS Knights have recorded their turnover in less than five seconds of the quarter. This actually happens because a careless play by Freddie Lish. Meantime, the Corey Jones penetrates inside, trying to draw the fouls, and the referee calls it a foul on Russell Lowe, that is. Russell Lowe, who's becoming a rim protector, as we said before. Um, he's not becoming afraid to begin to make the presence of the defense. Corey Jones was first as one and two. Um, it's, it's interesting to me that Jones began to drive inside, and this is very early in the quarter, and I'm, I'm, I'm very fascinated to see what is the strategy for each coaches for the coming in this quarter. They've seen what they've done in the first half. They know what they could work on. They know what they could improve. They know what they could just adjust. Um, so far, Slingers are leading this because of the intensity with that first turnover in literally five seconds at the beginning of the quarter. Again, Slingers returns the possession with Xavier Alexander again penetrating inside finding Ryan Wright with the easy two you know an underestimated game here in the ABL is a two-man game and when you have your two imports working together that's something I kind of miss seeing in Duke Cruz uh, remember the alley-oop that he he has given to Brian Williams and Brian Williams back and forth to him and when they work together a two-man game is going to be deadly uh, we already recorded their their first sloppy defense sorry Ardo but I have to comment on that sloppy <laughs> defense on the Knights. Just leaving right, right inside with nobody is guarding him. Where's Brian in that play? CLS Knights need to adjust very quickly because if they're going to establish their dominance inside, it's not going to work by having nobody in there. And a double team by the Slingers, they know that they're going to start attacking Brian at this moment. Again, unnecessary foul by Brian Williams. Maybe he is a little frustrated leaving Ryan right just scoring so easily here unnecessary foul there by brian williams he needs to be careful he needs to watch out for their that fouls man if we count i believe it is now his fourth foul so the singapore slingers with this position with the one point lead trying to feed xavier alexander's inside Russell Lowe having a good game tonight on defense. Meanwhile, this guy just destroying the interior defense of the CLS Knights Indonesia. Man, grinding and hustling inside the paint. This is the staple of Xavier's game. He's just going to plow his way inside. And with only the first minute, we haven't even passed the first minute. And Slingers seems have begun to establish their dominance first in the paint and the intensity of that first turnover. I'm, I don't know why I'm still talking about it. I just can't. I can't believe that, that it was supposed to be an inbound for the Knights. It, it's a bad beginning for the Knights in Indonesia, but they need to regroup to find a way to score in this sec third quarter. Mario yes. Wisan steps in. This is the second. Yeah, he made two. Crucial three-pointers in the second quarter. And now, young legs, young legs right there. But unfortunately, he misses. And sloppy pass there by the Slingers. Sandy Fabiancia leading the breakaway for the three-point. And for sure, it's Mane! Mane! Sandy. You know what? Sandy rhymes with money. That's why he keeps making it. And always a three from Sandy electrified the crowd. But again, that interior defense by the CLS Knights Indonesia, they need to regroup. Brian needs to step up inside. This is this is just like old school uh, bully ball by Slingers. They just throw it in there and just plow. Throw it in there and see what happens. And um, CLS Knights need to figure out if they're going to double team because Slingers have been double teaming their imports, uh, the other team's imports. And so you could see that in the previous foul that cost Brian Williams. I believe it's his third foul. 
Again, a possession for the CLS Knights Indonesia. Mario Wisang trying to find the open man in this inbound. <laughs> they, maybe they didn't let uh, Freddy Lish to do the inbound again. <laughs> I say, you know what, after what you did, let me, let me just get this ball for you, bro. Let me just get it No more ball for you, Freddy. <laughs> Still, a uh, three-point lead. The CLS Knights Indonesia with seven seconds, 28, uh, seven minutes, 28 seconds to go in this third quarter. 14 on the shot clock. And if, if, if this is the first time you've ever joined ABL, you might notice that every time that the clock resets, it resets at 14 seconds. I don't know if many ABL fans out there know, but if you're new to the ABL, it doesn't reset at 24 seconds. It actually resets at 14. 14. And um, I'm, st I'm still arguing, is that is that the best way to do it? Well, well, it's, a what do you think? It's, it's in the middle, so I think they'll accept it. I, I, I kind of like it because it just changes things up. Because if you're used to the NBA, you know that you know 24 seconds is 24 seconds. Uh, when you get the rebound, it's 24 seconds. You don't cut it to 14. And But I guess with 10 minutes on the quarter instead of a full 12, uh, it kind of make up the seconds lost that you just kind of have to hustle back in even if you get that offensive rebound. But rule is still a rule. I don't know, you have to commit to that rule. <laughs> they're still uh, I'm still arguing to against out it, something. I'm not sure. Right now they're still figuring out something, maybe something is wrong with the shot clock or the scoreboard. But the score now for sure, it's CLS Knight trailing by one point. Brian Williams from the corner. For the money! It continues to happen. So this is a great shot by Brian Williams. He misses the rebound, but he can secure that one. <laughs> Almost a score by Brian Wright. But a foul call on the Corey Jones, on AJ Mandani. Coach Coco doesn't look happy with that decision for the referee. And of course, the crowd also didn't like that decision. The Co Coach Coco always, <laughs> always animated with that call that he doesn't like. Well, Coach Coco knows his game. He knows his basketball game inside out. He knows that there's something not right with that uh, call. I'm hoping that there might be a replay there for that skirmish that happened between between these two teams, and it looks like it's going to be Slinger's ball. Nugroho is definitely not happy with this, <laughs> with that call. But I like that intensity coming from Coach Coco. It shows up that he loved this team. He will do anything to make sure that the CLS Knights get the W tonight. Meantime, Xavier Alexander penetrating inside. There's and convert for a two-point. Russell Lowe against Brian Williams with the fake, wow. and he makes that hook. What? What? What a shaking big move. Low is an underrated scorer, and uh, if you give him enough space, that's what he's gonna do. He's he's more and more ever present for the Slingers, especially with the absence of Justin Howard. They, they need him to be more present inside, and that's exactly what they're going to do. The score is still tied, 48 each. Oh, again, they're trying to draw a foul on Mario, but a push called on AJ Mandani. A lot of players is getting emotional on AJ Mandani. So it's a good job on AJ is trying to reach the emotion of these nice players. <laughs> Again, six minutes to go in this third quarter. Still tied up at 48 each. Mario Wisang still feeling hot from three, but unfortunately trying to find the Corey Jones, but it's a turnover on the night. I think I have to give credit to Slingers for hedging that defense. And when, when you do a switch from the top of the key or on the shoulder of the three-point, you have to figure out, you have to make a decision. Am I going to continue hedging the previous guard that is about to get the pass, or am I going to focus on the inside man? And I, I want to give credit to the Slingers defense for making that right decision. Alexander with a sweet fadeaway for two. A push there by Freddy, but... <laughs> So fortunate that the referee didn't see that. Mario for three. Offensive rebound by Brian. But Xavier Alexander is trying to steal the ball. End up with the out of bounds. And still, Slingers leading by two. With five minutes, 51 seconds to go. 
we, uh, we're not we're not seeing anything from the Corey Jones in this quarter. No, not yet. And they're they're still figuring out. Uh, are we gonna attack the inside or the outside? And I, I gotta say, Slinger's defense have really amped it up. Um, they don't they don't want to go zone. Not like they're ever known for it. But it's it's probably an option that they could think about heading into the second half. Foul again on AJ Mandani is going to be his third foul. Nice job by Rama Febri Utomo drawing the foul on AJ Mandani. This is a substitution now. With three fouls, AJ Mandani is being subbed in with number 11. Uh, Larry Liu is coming in for Mandani. He's in foul trouble. He's got at least two fouls and uh, he needs to calm down. <laughs> and so the coach is like saying, okay, you got a better sit down. Again, Sandy for the money! The National Sharp Shooter, Sandy Kurniawan for three. Sandy with four three-pointers, he's four for six on the tray. He's gonna look for that, and that's the advantage of Sandy Kurniawan. He has such a height. You may not see that on TV, folks, but he actually is quite a tall man. He's uh, around six, six two, and he's nice. just able to shoot over all of his defenders. Great defense by the Knights. Especially Brian Williams with that block, securing the paint. Again, the Knights trying to stretch the lead in this third quarter. Mario Wissam to the Corey Jones pull up jumper. They still cannot connect. The Corey Jones still having four points on his stat sheet. Okay, great defense by the Knights again, They're pushing the penetration to Aliou, the Corey Jones with the two and one with the basket. With this basket, they know <laughs> the crowd is lit. They can't relent. They, they have to, they have to pull away at this moment. And this is the perfect opportunity. When you have shots, here's the run. They have a two one lead. Uh, they have a two one run game here. That, that's the third time that Jones received a pass from the inside and he's almost careful to receive it because the last time he received it from Mario, Super Mario, it went out for a turnover as he can't convert the three-point game, but now they're leading it by three at just under four and a half minutes left. That's the Knights basketball. You just watched a high tempo penetration and also a great play there by the Knights. Unfortunately, the Corey Jones cannot convert the N1. And almost a high-flying action there by the Slingers. The crowd is pumped with four minutes to go in the third quarter. A steal by the That's Corey steal. Jones. And Sandy again for the... Uh, not this time, not this time, man. <laughs> the roof would have probably blown off if he would have made that. I thought he was going to make that shot. I was preparing to save money. <laughs> If you say money, I will say ka-ching. <laughs> Ryan Wright trying to punish inside against Brian oh. Williams. And again, Russell Lowe almost caught a travel there. Xavier Alexander for three. <laughs> they need that. Singapore Slingers need that three from Alexander to shut the crowd. Man, X-Man with that three. He also showed that three to the bench of the CLS Knights. It's almost, it's almost provoking. Yeah, we can see their high tension inside. Brian Williams with Ryan Wright trying to draw the emotional side of each other. As we can see on the replay, here Brian Williams penetrates inside against Russell Lowe. And referee calls it a foul. But still, it's not a shooting foul. They're going to inbound. You know, uh, okay, it's going to be a free throw. I, I I'd love to think that a um, a rivalry yeah. begins to happen uh, between the CLS and Singapore, and I, I'm not I'm not looking for trouble. I mean, you know, Indonesians are known to love people. <laughs> we're very smiley. Yeah. Everybody like, eh, orang Indonesia, yeah, we're so uh, so friendly, so nice, and, and I mean we are. Yeah. But I think I think for the for the sportsmanship and for 
just just intensity of this game. I think it would be nice if we actually develop some sort of uh, rivalry between these two teams. And, and it looks like it's happening. Yes, it, it had the potential to be a rivalry because it's always a close game between these two teams. And still, 53 points each. Moving on with three minutes to go in the third quarter. The CLS Knights trying to break their losing streak with Mario Luisang Wisang leading the way oh. with a catalyst pass there Bri yeah. to Brian. Forces a turnover. I think Mario was intimidated by the defense of Xavier. There was a huge mismatch there. Uh, I think it's amazing how Xavier did not, you know, did not think about that switch. He had to put in position and continue to guard his man and to force a turnover on uh, Mario. So Coach Coco didn't like the things that he saw. His player played carelessly in this third quarter. With that, that last possession, Mario Wissan just passes the ball carelessly to Brian Williams with a result of a out of bounds. You know, if, if I do my count correct, uh, the Slingers are now shooting at 40%, which means they have increased their chances to make the basket. And they want to convert those baskets into, into leading points. And it's putting Coach Nugroho and a run for his money as he's re-strategizing. And sometimes we forget that, you know, Coach Neo Banks Young is, is one of the best in the business. Um, in fact, he's so good that Coach Torres, Coach Torres of Eastern Hong Kong says he has no doubt that the Slingers will reach the playoffs. In fact, it's going to reach the finals again. Wow. I mean, considering that they're only fourth right now as of tonight, Coach Torres, to say that of his friend, uh, 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 Co Coach Neo Beng Xiang about the Slingers and just their ability to push, their ability to get back into the game. And, and, and Knights are having a run here, especially you know being at home. It's it's always a nice feeling to have, and you have the court, uh, you have the you have the crowd with you. Um, and I have to, I hate to admit this, but it's true. Slingers are holding their own. They are doing great defense. They're keeping their intensity, and they're getting easy baskets, and they're not letting them through with just two minutes and 50 seconds left on the court. With their two imports scoring two, 20 points each, but with Xavier Alexander and Ryan Wright, 20 points, and Xavier Alexander making 22 points on his statistic. The top scorer for the Singapore Slingers makes it a two points lead for the Slingers against the 53 for the CLS Knights Indonesia. With two minutes, 30 seconds to go, the CLS Knights trying to secure the victory, Brian Williams with the great offensive rebound. Almost an Almost. end one. This guy is a monster inside, holding the record for the rebound of the Asian Basketball League with 32 rebounds last game against the Lions. You know, this man with such a high IQ, do you guys notice that, uh, folks, if you could see that Brian Williams actually, when he make that pull-up shot inside, he's holding the shot to draw the foul and he knows that he the only way that he could get more points is to convert the n1 and unfortunately he did not make the first shot of the charity strike but now he has one more shot to take uh, but i just want to give credit to brian williams for having such high iq he's inside he's keeping his composure i know that he's getting tired now it's 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 the third quarter uh, but can he hold it up for the next quarter and one more after this one Fortunately, he missed both of his free throw. Brian Williams is leading the league in defensive rebound with 11.75 defensive rebound per game. And the Slingers trying to stretch the lead. Now it's two, but with this shot from Xavier Alexander, if that went in, it's going to be four point. The Corey Jones leading the breakaway, getting fouled. Is it a foul or a traveling? The referee calls it a traveling. The crowd isn't like that, Ardo. So as the Corey Jones. Here comes the replay. You can see it again. As you can see right there. It's unfortunately because the defender is falling down. So you have to like uh, lean back. But well, referee calls it a travel. It's well, a travel. That was great defense by, was that Desmond? But for sure, it's under two minutes to go in the third quarter. The Slingers leading by two points with Xavier Alexander leading the offense. Top scorer, 22 points. Again, Ryan Wright also with 22 points in the statistic. Four-point lead, Slingers. 
They're slowly breaking away for this lead now. They know that they just keep on grinding in the middle. That's what's going to take, and a little miscommunication there. <laughs> One thing Sandy. that they didn't need right now is the turnover, Ardo. Yes. They make several turnover in this third quarter. Fabri Utomo trying to find Sandy. End up a turnover out of bounds. Slingers trying to punish the turnover to convert the point with Ryan Wright passes inside. A uh, foul called on Brian Williams. Is that Brian Williams? Yeah. Or was that on? It's on Brian Williams. The replay is going to show where the foul and the contact occurred. And uh, for sure, Brian Williams is having his third personal foul right now. Forces the number two player from the Singapore Slingers, Kelvin Lim, into the charity stripes to have a chance for a two-point play. You know, it's really difficult for the CLS Knights right now when they're about to go inside and their Slingers have such experience. They, they know that when the other team is desperate to be able to maintain the game or just keep their composure and their pace, uh, all, all, we, all they need to do is just one pump fake. One head fake, and you see three knights up in the air, and that's what it takes just for the free trip to the charity strike. Calvin Lim convert both of the free throws. That makes it a six-point lead with one minute, seven seconds to go in the third quarter. The Corey Jones is still finding his way to score for the CLS Knights Indonesia to prove themselves that he is worthy for this team. Look at that hustle by the Corey Jones. Getting huh, the putback no illegally. No basket. Offensive goaltending. Offensive goaltending. Yep. That's one thing that you'd learn about offensive goaltending. You cannot rebound your own dunk, miss dunk, and then you know, put it back again. I have not seen that in a long time. I just saw it last week when Kyrie Irving lay up. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, and then Marcus Smart just accidentally tipped the ball. Himself. And, yeah. And then the referee calls it an offensive, offensive goaltending. Goaltending. So they it's didn't. not enough that you goaltend on the other end. Yeah. But now you can even goaltend your own. Yep. They didn't call it a point. Coach Coco. Coach Coco is not happy, folks. As you can see on your screen. And with less than a minute to go in the third quarter, six-point deficit. So you know what is Coach Coco upset about. This, this coach right here, Ardo, he's he is not happy. He is not a happy coach right now. It seems like there's a, there's a skirmish going on in the paint that, that Coco wanted to point out. And um, unfortunately, it can't be reviewed as of now. It's a travel call by the referee on Ryan Wright. A turnover in less than a minute to go. This is an opportunity for the CLS Knights to cut off the lead, Ardo. This is, this, this is an opportunity. I mean, we have 30, 34 seconds left. And there's uh, approximately 14 seconds difference between the uh, shot clock and the game clock. The Corey Jones, the new player for the Monday! This is one of his arsenal three-point shoot for the Corey Jones. He converted that. But he's finally making it. He's still one of four, 25%. And uh, now they're going to break down this last shot. There's no more shot clock. Shot clock is gone. We have six seconds left. Five. Why are they going to convert this? Xavier Alexander, what a play! What a move! Reverse play by Xavier Alexander. What? Spectacular move at the end of the third quarter by Xavier Alexander. Oh no, he is taunting the Knights with his words. But the referee did not see that. But for sure, we see that on screen. And the crowd didn't like that action by Xavier Alexander. Wow. I've I've never I've never seen such intensity and anger from Xavier. Um, I, I don't know if you if you folks can see the replay, but it, it seems like he was completely taunting the whole bench, the whole bench of the 
of the CLS Knights was taunted by Xavier. The referee is going to take a look at that monitor to see what Xavier Alexander did at the end of the buzzer. Because it seems Xavier Alexander is saying something to the bench, maybe to Coach Coco. <laughs> I'm not sure if he's talking to Coach Coco, but everyone else. I, I did I did notice that the general manager, uh, Mr. Ferry, was not happy, and he even screamed at him back. And I, I, th I think, folks, uh, if you're watching this, he's joining us at MNC Sports or Video.com or on YouTube right now, you are witnessing a possible rivalry uh, right before your eyes. This is a high-intensity game with the end of the third quarter the singapore slingers is leading by five points again the cls knights indonesia this is a must win game for the knights if if they still want to compete for the playoffs because they are now sitting at number seven on the standings so we can see actually the cls knights is leading the points in the third quarter with 16 points against the Slingers with 14. More action, fourth quarter after this. I think what's interesting here for CLS Nice is that they have to Oh, begin to just push it through. Um, for the past the past three games that they have lost, it's it's the fourth quarter that the CLS Knights are beginning to break uh, break down. And uh, this last quarter was just an awesome display of Slingers basketball. As a two-man game by both Ryan Wright and Xavier has been happening, uh, Lowe has been collecting four rebounds and he is, he is doing, pushing all that he can against both Jones and Williams and they're not stopping. And here's the first ever offensive <laughs> uh, goaltending <laughs> by the CLS Knights. And uh, I don't know if, if we're going to ever see that again. Uh, I hope not for anyone. But uh, that was a nice, uh, nice dish by, by Mario Williams. Uh, was that what? Williams or oh, Wushan? For the three point? Yeah. Yeah, Mario. Sorry. I was Ma Mario thinking about. Wushan. And uh, as you guys can see now, finally, we have the scores by the quarter. They are defeating them each quarter ever since the beginning of the second quarter, inching and inching away. And now we find ourselves to a five point game in the final quarter. The fourth quarter is the most important quarter of this game. 10 minutes of high intensity basketball, where tonight the Knights is trying to break their losing streak. Their first win is in this building, in this opening night. But since then, they haven't found a victory again it's so crucial for cls knights to win they they have less wins than the uh, competing slingers right now and this is exactly what coach teres is talking about slingers are ones that just continue to grind if if you want to look at what how ryan wright has been delivering he is just a monster inside the paint and he will continue to attack and, and th this is where uh, the argument is is happening between are you going to find a big man in Brian Williams and you're going to capitalize on that? Because I don't think it's a bad strategy. I, I believe Brian Williams is, is the kind of man that you need in your franchise. He's a stretch five. He's a future center. I believe the, the basketball today is looking for shooters that are stretches. They stretch the floor. They're tall. And, and, and if you sag at them, they're going to start shooting lights out. But however... Uh, this shows the strength of the Singaporean Slingers. They, they, they stick to the wingman and the all-around versatile intensity that Xavier Alexander brings. And Ryan Wright, who you thought might be you know, a potential step down for the Slingers, as is Justin Howard, seems like they're working very well in Coach uh, Siang's new system. The beginning of the final, the fourth quarter of the game, the Knights is trailing by five, trying to cut things and finding their first win after three losses in a row from the corner freddy for the money actually that was caleb that was caleb okay. yep I, well, I, I thought it was freddy but it's caleb it's a good start by the knights for the first minute on the fourth quarter again slingers is moving things with Xavier Alexander 
is having a great game with 24, 24 points in the block third quarter. We got a block from Brian Williams. He's gonna he's gonna register a block, but it seems like there's a there's a foul call and we're not sure what it is yet. Is it a foul called on Bimariski? We should find out on this replay. So you can see Bimariski is battling with Xavier Alexander for the rebound, and right there, the hand of Brian Williams connect with connected with Xavier Alexander for the foul. Is that a third foul? on B-Dub or Brian Williams, who also scored 14 points for this game. He is the bright spot for the team, and uh, it's important that CLS Knights could keep Brian Williams on the floor, especially in this last quarter of the match. This guy is a monster, averaging 22 points a game. He already surpasses his average with 24 points into this fourth quarter. Make it 25. Make it 25. Xavier Alexander, the Mr. Triple Double, holding the most triple double in the ABL. The crowd is booing. Trying to take Xavier Alexander out of his mind, but he made both of free throws. It makes it a four-point game for the Slingers with Mario Wiesang leading the way. The senior. I call him Uncle, but you know what? He is a legend. Again, fake by great defense by Singapore Slingers. That's right. And a steal there by Larry Liu. Feed to Ryan Wright against the Corey Jones. Great defense, great hustle. Brian again with the rebound. Corey Jones was very patient. He wanted to see what Ryan Wright was going to do. And he held his own, he held his position, and he does not want to back down. And another fake here to kick out. Penetrates inside. Penetration inside. With a scoop, the Corey Jones, can he prove himself in this fourth quarter to Corey, deliver a W Corey, for the CLS Nice Indonesia? Corey Jones is 11 points now, and he, he's one of the few bright spots that is happening. The crowd is booing. The crowd is booing and Alexander. We have established a rivalry, folks. Um, this Surabaya team is not happy with this play of Alexander, uh, Xavier Alexander. The crowd is being the fuel for the energy of the Knights Indonesia. They are so loud tonight. Well, it looks like another foul for Mandani. Again, AJ Mandani with some taunting to the Corey Jones. You know, you know, the whole game! <laughs> that Danny. makes it interesting, Argo. Mandani collected his fourth foul, and I think they're gonna do the substitution. And coming in for the Hanbin is coming in for the Singapore Slingers. Hanbin's coming in. Shooter. And uh, of steal there by Xavier Alexander. On the breakaway, left-handed layup, and, and one. one. What a nice composure move by Xavier. He just was patient. He was waiting for the contact, and uh, he knew that he couldn't be defeated from behind. Bima had no choice but to foul. I, I question if that was a good move by him, but again, the defense of the Slingers has really stepped up in this quarter, and especially in the beginning of the second quarter. Not many people realize that, but at the end of the second quarter, they have collected two steals and the force turnovers has increased for the CLS Knights. I believe they collected over 17. They, they collected 17 turnovers and it's just not going to do for CLS Knights. So this guy is having a great game tonight with his father, mother and son is watching on the sideline. They, go, they are going to be a proud parent. As we can see Xavier Alexander already have 28 points in this fourth quarter. 28 points, and he's going to keep going. He's going to keep pushing. He's going to keep asking for the ball. And watch as he continues to play in this quarter. The crowd is booing like crazy. They don't like Xavier. They completely want to make sure he does not make this shot. 
But unfortunately, he made that shot. That silenced the crowd right there from Xavier Alexander. 29 points with 7 minutes, 40 seconds to go. Still a 5-point lead by the Singapore Slingers. The Knights is still trying to find a way to stop Xavier Alexander and to connect with Brian Williams with 14 points. It's a low-point game for Brian Williams. Still haven't connect in this. They need to shoot this one. Di Mariski forces the three, long three, still cannot convert. The shot clock was going down. They had to take that shot. They take a little too long again. The Singaporean defense is really dominating. It may, it may not convert into steals and blocks, but it's enough to give pressure for the Seattle Knights. Are they going to take the shot? Are they going to take from the outside? Should they go in? But now, um, there are very little options happening. As you can see, the morale of CLS Knights has gone down just every possession, and they need a push. They need to somehow get back together. Coach Ngurho is getting fresh feet on the floor. What are they going to do with seven minutes exactly left? But six seconds left on this shot clock, down by five here in Gorkata Jaya. This is an interesting rotation by Coach Coco right here, putting the Corey Jones together with Rudy Linganai for the first time this game. And Rudy is trying to lead the breakaway, the offense for the Knights with six seconds, 40, six, six minutes, 40 seconds to go. Riding Williams, grinding inside against Ryan Wright for the hook and, and count it in for the end one. And the end one. Foul on Ryan Wright, number four. Ryan Wright with uh, three personal fouls against Brian. Brian needs to play more aggressive. That's right, that's right. And uh, I think, I, I do I do have to say that ever since that scare in the first game, Brian Williams has just a tad decreased his intensity. I don't know if it was that scare that he had with Duke Cruz in the first game, uh, but unfortunately he cannot convert the N1. They're still down by three. There's still plenty of clock left, but they just have to figure out, are they going to just Grind it inside or outside. I do not see a strategy yet from the CLS Knights. AJ Mandani with a hook, but he secures against the possession. The Knights really need to secure the rebounds. With six minutes to go, three points deficit. Ryan Wright misses the shot. Again, they're struggling to secure the defensive rebounds. With Russell Lowe, short jumper. This time, the oh. Corey Jones connect with the defensive rebound. Rudy Lingadai, the second heritage import from Philippines for the CLS Knights Indonesia. Meantime, Brian Williams, Brian Williams is, is still down, down on down. the court. He is still in pain. He's down. Again, the same place, just like the first game again for most of Dreamers when he got injured. It's at the same same Floor. position. Yeah, same same location. It's a bit alarming. His when left hand is shaking. Yeah. Um, uh, looks like he could get up. He was helped. Looks like he's fine. This guy's playing with a sore knee, a sore ankle, and a flu last game against Eastern Long Lions. So I don't think that just a sore can stop Ryan Williams. He's such a warrior for this team. He's just going to keep grinding. I'm not sure if they're going to substitute him in. Okay, he's substituting out. Looks like they're going to put Nugroho in. Is that is that correct? Still four players in the court for the CLS Knights Indonesia. They're putting Gamilang in. They're, they're putting, putting Gamilang, Gamilang. So it's a small ball It's a small formation. ball lineup. Here it is, yeah. So can the Corey Jones prove himself to be a worthy replacement for Duke Cruz, an import player playing the first time in his career in the ABL. Dimariski forcing That's good. inside, drawing a foul. That's good, draw the foul, draw the foul. Um, they, they, as you can see, the Knights are pretty much outside the perimeter and uh, he had to find his own shot. He had to, uh, I believe, is that is that Saroni? It's Bimariski. Bimariski, Adiancha. Yeah, he, he has to find his own shot and with the clock winding down, uh, it's a good thing that the foul was drawn or else it would have been another turnover. And uh, there's a chance here to cut the lead down to one. The CLS Knights Indonesia is struggling from the free throw line. Yep. Brian Williams is also didn't connect from the free throw. 
Rob Bima Rizky is missing his first free throw. And we hope that the CLS Knights can convert this free throw if they want to take the W tonight. He missed that one. Missed both. Again, Singapore Slinger is just slowing the tempo. He's trying to force the game clock. A great a block there by Brian that Williams. Was a block by Brian Williams. <laughs> He had that position coming for him. Did not expect that he would reach out that far. But here's Alexander. Three he seconds on the shot clock. Xavier Alexander didn't realize that the shot clock expires. Great defense by the CLS Knights Great Indonesia. Defense. Great defense. I have to say that Alexander has been completely shut down on the side. He can decide, am I going to drive in through? But they know that the defense was there for them. Um, and uh, he just does not see the shot clock. I don't know if any of his friends, uh, any of his teammates call him out for a shot clock. With 5 minutes, 16 seconds to go, seems like the Singapore Slingers is going to full court press defense on the Knights. With Rudy Lingarai leading the offense for the CLS Knights in Indonesia. The There's last, actually yep. still plenty of time left on the clock. They just need to make sure that these baskets go in. And as they try to kick it out outside just now, it's a good defender, Rudy Linganai. I didn't see any action from Freddie Lish this quarter. No. They didn't put in Freddie Lish in this fourth quarter series. This is an interesting thing for the CLS Knights Indonesia, this rotation right here. That silenced the crowd. Dagger three. A dagger three. And it makes a six points deficit. Slingers leading 69 against 63 CLS Knights Indonesia. The Corey Jones forces this shot. Brian Williams with the offensive rebounds. And, and gets it. two points. Two points in. They're still down by five. And, uh, four, uh, excuse me. They they need to figure out. Um, Slingers are really taking their time. They want to kill the clock. Uh, they don't want to push the ball too fast. But when the ball is on Xavier's hand, Man, all, all, the, all the best are lose, and there you go. It's a shot right there, the perimeter jumper. Xavier Alexander already have 29 points on his statistic. For sure, is one of the candidates for the MVP for this season. Ryan Williams! And one! And one! And one, folks! And that makes the crowd pump. That? But <laughs> you know what, Ardo? He needs to make this free throw. I think that that should bring the crowd back because the crowd has been kind of silent. Uh, they don't know. Uh, they don't want to give too much pressure to say last night. The pressure is already on their hand. They're down in this in this next three minutes, 49 seconds is going to determine everything. Uh, it looks like Knights cannot push. They're, they're trying to find a hole and a gap in the defense, but Slingers I guess in, in Siang and Coach Siang's system, it's really locked down. They, they've done all that they could on the defensive end. There's no way that the, the hole can be any, any. it's nowhere to be found. They, they, they don't know where to go. And it seems like the shooters of the CLN Knights have lost their rhythm, they've lost yep. their, their confidence. Um, what is it going to take for them? That, that last quarter was such a scare. Yeah, they haven't uh, made a three-point shoot this game in this nope, quarter not at all but you know what one thing for sure Ardo, they need to stop Xavier Alexander because tonight he scored 31 points he need to stop Xavier Alexander to score from perimeter penetration anything because this is Xavier Alexander's night to make the slingers lead by four points a double double already 31 points and over 13 rebounds Xavier is gonna is easily gonna be voted as the player of the game for tonight. If they win. But still, we got three minutes forty-eight seconds to go in this final quarter. The CLS Knights is trying to break their losing streaks. It's already been three losing streaks against the Slingers, the Mono Vampires, the Hong Kong Eastern Long Lions, but tonight they are seeking for revenge. Freddie has not been seen, and I'm wondering if uh, everything's okay down at the bench here for Freddie. He's nowhere to be seen. Maybe he has some 
minor injury that we didn't know, but we are going to update it real soon as our reporter is still finding out what happens to Freddy because we can see Freddy not even in the bench. I don't know. Yeah, he's nowhere to be seen in the bench. And we, we could just, uh, Night Society can only uh, hope for the best that uh, Freddy can be ready in time for even for tonight. But it looks like if he's not going to be in a bench here tonight, uh, he is done for the night. But now another Heritage player is taking off his position out and the combo guard alongside with Mario Wisan, Rudy Linganai. So Rudy Linganai is 31 years old. He is an experienced player, played in the PBA, a good defender. Meantime, the Brand Williams again misses his free throw. Free throw. Be converted. And, uh, it's, a, it's a shame, but now, now Slingers just need to hold their ground. They just need to make sure that these baskets go in and, and they, they just kill the, kill the clock, make sure the clock goes down. A switch there on Xavier Alexander oh. forces Brian Williams. What a shot to what leave his shot. post. Yeah, what a shot there that by was, Xavier Alexander. That was an amazing, that was, that was a challenge of Brian, Brian Williams' grill. And a Great. block. Now a block by the Slingers from behind announcing a 3-3 run. Not make that a, a 4-3 run, but the fourth turnover by Ryan Wright. A turnover by Ryan Wright trying to find the open man in Kevin Liu. Calvin Lim is losing the ball. Rudy Linganai again, another headed player for the Knights trying to connect for the basket to cut the lead. But again, a turnover on Rudy Linganai on CLS Knights. A sloppy basketball in these two possessions, Ardo. Very sloppy. It seems like Mario From both teams. Seems like Mario felt like the uh, Ryan Wright was the last person to touch the ball, but it looks like the referee says no. It's uh, Singapore, Singapore ball. They need to, they need to get back together, trying to focus to finish this game with a bang. Because tonight the fourth quarter is just not a good quarter for, especially for the CLS Knights Indonesia. The Slingers just dominating inside, forcing the CLS Knights to have... Oh, we have a, we have a Singapore down. The Corey Jones with the fake, passes the ball back to Mario Wisa for the corner three. Unfortunately, it doesn't connect. Looks like we got a man down. Is that Russell Lowe? Russell Lowe is down, having some kind of minor injury on their last possession on defense. Yep, Larry Liu is having some kind of oh, no. hamstring, maybe some hamstring injury. Yeah, excuse me, that was, that was not uh, Russell. Yeah, Larry Liu. That was Larry Liu. Yeah, no. It seems like he uh, went down and he couldn't get up, but he did get up on his own strength and he walked on his own strength, but he's immediately on the floor and having himself checked. So let's hope everything's okay with him. This, you know, this, this is where things get, you know, true, true champions really rise down at the last quarter. We are down with two minutes left and 15 seconds. The position is in Slingers. They're having quite a comfortable lead. Right now, six points seems a distant, um, a distant lead for the CLS Knights. And now it's an issue of how much they can. Looks like another foul. No, the ball is going CLS loose Knights. Ball foul loose ball on the foul. Slingers, Ardo. So I think that CLS Knights just have to connect on the three point. They need to find Sandy because he's hot this game. But he's, yeah, he hasn't connected for a three point for right. this quarter. He's on the floor and, I, and I'm wondering if Nugroho has, has uh, something up his sleeve for that three point. I know there's two minutes left and a two minute warning is, is always good to know that we're about to end this quarter. It's a, uh, and end this game. It's a shooting foul because the Slingers already have five team fouls. Uh, they're on a penalty. So this is a good situation for the Knights. They can force to penetrate inside to draw the foul. Rudy Linganai with the first free throw. Yes. He connects. Five points deficit. It's getting closer, people. So you would say that if, as long as the CLS Knights could just attack the inside and, and hopefully draw that foul, that would be enough for them to get back. Yeah, of course. Two minutes is still a lot of time with just two possession lead for the Slingers. This is where every possession counts now. 
If yep. there's even a turnover, even another foul, this could change the tide of the game. But yes, they need to stop this guy, number 15, Xavier Alexander, 33 points, oh. make it 36. Close what? to a 40 games. 40 what point a game. shot. Yeah, what a shot. That silenced the crowd. Okay, and Mario and one. Again, over AJ Mandani. Knights is not backing down. It's not over, folks. It's not over. Still a six point deficit. They can make it two three pointers, and we're tied. AJ Mandani again. A foul on Mario Wisan. A lot of experience on that legs. That's right. Converts. Wushan was, Wu was looking for that foul. He looking for the contact. He knew that uh, when Mandani is right behind him, he has the advantage. And uh, that, that's what 30-year-old experience can do to you, to have so much IQ and so much patience inside. And it converts to three-point. Now they're down by five. With a minute and a half left, folks, you are watching ABL eighth season. This is the rivalry that begins between Singapore and CLS Knights. Five points down. Here we go. We have 10 seconds on the shot clock. Here comes Ryan Wright. This is the final game of this year. Can the CLS Knights Indonesia give a Christmas gift to their fans? <laughs> but it's five points deficit. Mario Wilson passes outside. Bima Rizky still cannot oh. connect with the three. Just relaxes Xavier Alexander. Okay. Looks like they're going to just one clock down. They're not going to make the foul call. They're going to see if they can have a turnover or get the rebound back. And depending on how many seconds you have left is what you can do with it. Again. Oh. We have 38 seconds to go. What they need hustle. to hustle on defense. And the Corey Jones just went for a reaching foul. Reaching foul. Are they in the penalty? Nope. Oops. They are still in three personal uh, team fouls the three team fouls so they still have two more to go but with the clock winding down looks like Nugroho wants to talk and have a few minutes with their squad 71 76 you are watching live here on MNT Sports YouTube and also on video.com this is an intense game if you've just tuned in Looks like a rivalry has a rivalry has occurred between these two nations. <laughs> um, if you could just <laughs> bring this down to, you know, how can nations, you know, go out at each other on a basketball court? Well, here you have it, folks. CLS are calling timeout, and Nugroho looks like he's not backing down. He's looking at his team. They're looking at what they can do together. He's consulting his assistant. Uh, coaches and they're looking at what they can do with 34 seconds left on the clock. If they have T Tracy McGrady, I think they can win this game. I still remember when <laughs> oh, T-Mac right. scores that's 15 right. points with just 35 seconds to go against the San Antonio Spurs. This reminds me of that moment. You know, if, if Corey Jones can just be that Tracy <laughs> and make that three, make that fall, make that... Um, I mean, it was just an amazing shot. I, I was not there. Did you, did you watch it live? I watched it live, Fardo. You watched it live? Yeah. Where were you? Not live on the stadium, but live on TV. Right, right. <laughs> Where were you? I'm in my house. Oh, okay, I thought you were. No, no you I'm were not, not on the court, okay, man. Okay, no, no, no. Were you like in America at the time? No, no, no. no okay, man. okay. But it's an amazing game by Tracy wait, McGrady. Wait, wait, wait. They had NBA TV at the time? Yeah, of course, man. How can I have Cable. Cable. Have cable. Oh, yeah. Okay. All, All right. right. Back to the game. 34 seconds to go in this fourth and final quarter. The Slinger still leading by five points. They are still okay. The referee didn't call it a pushing foul on Brian Williams. Brian hesitated the oh, three, and Brian he hesitated. loses the ball. And he hesitated. Oh man! Brian hesitated. He didn't know what to do, and that hesitation cost him the game. He just need to shoot that ball, man. <laughs> you could, if you, you, folks, you could see that um, I'm not good at lip reading. Yep. But it seems like Xavier is saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not too sure what he's apologizing for. And, I, and this has been such an intensive night for Xavier. I mean, 31 points. It's not 31 points. It's 36 points. 36 points. Excuse me. 36 points. I think 15 rebounds. They have to make the foul now. 
Again. Oh, they see if they could just get back and uh, and just just grind it down. And I, I'm I'm just curious, Brian Williams, who's shooting uh, close to 50 percent tonight, yep. did not take that shot. What, what, why do you think that was so? Maybe in his mind, it's still a five-point lead, so he's <laughs> going to secure well a two points. Maybe if he got lucky, he can get a foul and maybe he can make it the free throw for the three-point play. I mean, if my memory serves well, it's almost like he got clueless. He didn't know what to do. It's a high-risk shot there if you want to take the three-point sh right. shot, but Brian Williams had another thing in his mind. He's trying to penetrate inside drawing a foul but I don't know I mean I know that you're at the penalty but when you're that open it was a 3-1 running uh, open shot there for CLS Knights but they didn't take it and they need I to convert this fast Ardo to the Corey back again to Sandy for a quick three blocked by Ryan Wright they need to take this shot quickly but it's, it's too rush for the Knights ends up that might be a dagger a dagger turnover. 11 Maybe seconds left. The, game. the shot clock is done. Looks like there's a timeout. 11 seconds to go. The game is not over until the buzzer. But for now, six points lead by the Singapore Slingers. I mean, with, with, with a great performance by Xavier I mean, Alexander. I mean, in, I mean, in theory, you could get back to back three point, but that you need to, <laughs> um, you need to get the rebound immediately. And the possession is going to be on Slingers. And so with 11 seconds left, what you can do, you could probably foul them and get the ball back. And that probably 10 seconds left. 10 seconds left, you begin on the other side of the court. I'm not sure how many timeouts that CLS Knights have. But if you think you have to call a timeout, they could begin on the other side. They have 10 seconds. If they could get a quick, quick jumper at the three points, then now they're only down by, let's say, you know, assuming that they don't make the free throws, they're only going to be down by three. But that's a lot of hope happening, and 11 seconds left, it might not be able to do. But look at the intensity of Coach Negro. He's not telling his team to back down. He is asking them, hey, everybody, wake up. you got to keep going, keep grinding. 11 seconds left. Make that foul call. Make that three-point shot. And before we go home tonight, we're going to show them that we belong here in ABL, and we're here to stay. We're not going anywhere. Just remember that the last game against the Lions with three seconds to go, CLS Knights is leading by three points. Right. And then the three free throws by Christian Stan Hardinger pushes the overtime and then win the game for the Lions. Quick fouls against Xavier Alexander, who already got 37 points. If he made this both free throws, it's going to be 39. Both free throws and having an eight-point lead, a possible eight-point lead is going to be very comfortable for the Slingers. And uh, I have to say congratulations to the Slingers. They've done a good job tonight. They've locked it down in the paint. They found the open man. And uh, the defense, I think, is the, the – if there's a if there's a defensive effort, if there's an, a team effort of the game, it would be the Slingers' defense. Yep. They surely play a great defense this game against the CLS Nice Indonesia, playing without Malcolm – Volkov is also a lockdown defender, but tonight they're pretty doing a pretty good job, especially defending the inside defense, the inside area against Brian Williams and the Corey Jones. But what's interesting about the Stingers defense is not as much as converting uh, steals and blocks, because on the stat sheet here, you could say that the steal block ratio is nine to five, which means defense by by all intents and purposes. Knight's defense is actually better than the Slingers. If you want to count stats, and I know you're a fantasy guy, so if you want to find you know, the right stats for defense, you look at how many stats they have, and it's 9 to 5. That means that's exactly 7 steals, and you have 2 blocks from the CLS Knights, but Slingers only have 4 steals and 1 block, and yet, why is the defensive ratio is much more higher on the Slingers? And it's one of those X factor, one of those hidden things, one of those things that it's it's not it doesn't it's, it doesn't explode from the stat sheet it's just defensive grind by the slingers and we see that in display tonight as we look at a nine seconds left let's see what the knights can do to end this game actually the singapore slingers also play a great defense on the three-point area where the knights just lit up this game but at the fourth quarter they contain that three-point area 
to make it invisible for the CLS Ties Indonesia. A quick three to Sandy, to, uh, to Febri Utomo. Still cannot convert. Three seconds to go. They let the ball and let the game. Congratulations. Singapore Slingers win this game. 79 against the CLS Knights Indonesia. 71. It's a great win on the road for the Singapore Slingers. Slingers are at a disadvantage when they lost at OCBC just a few days ago. They're now visiting to the, Singa uh, to the CLS Knights Indonesia. And Gore Kartajaya is known as a, a place that is not easy on visiting teams. Rambunctious crowd. They are totally into the match. They want to make sure the CLS Knights are winning, but tonight they cannot convert. 71-79 is the full time, is the full final score. CLS Knights against Singapore Slingers. The Slingers wins it with eight point deficits against the home team. It's a very great win for the Singapore Slingers on the road with great performance by Xavier Alexander, who scored 39 points on this game, together with Ryan Wright scoring 22 points for the Singapore. And you want to add 15 rebounds as well as two steals. This man is everywhere. X-Man, Xavier Alexander, just doing everything that he can to score. Meantime, Mario Wissang right here, we can see passes to Freddie Goldstein for the money shot. To Caleb Ramot, I'm sorry. Excuse Caleb. me. The Corey Jones also did their new import. Pretty good game tonight. This is still his first game. He's trying to adapt wow. with his new team. I'm telling you, if you are a Singapore fan tonight, you have got such a show by your team visiting Indonesia. Um, this is the crowd that is ready to tear you apart. So unfortunately, the home crowd is unable to celebrate this victory tonight because the visiting team just crushed them, especially on the fourth quarter. Congratulations to the Singapore Slingers. I mean, we don't have the final tally in the fourth quarter with the stats coming in, but I mean, the bright spots for the CLS Knights were only Brian Williams and a little bit for Freddie Lish, and we still haven't had any news from Freddie Lish. How? He's not played in the second half, and I wonder if there's going to be a report coming up soon, but we hope that uh, Fred Leish is going to be ready because uh, with all the injuries that's happening with the CLS Knights on their rookie rookie season here in the ABL, in the eighth season in the ABL, nine countries, nine teams, it's exciting, but CLS Knights coming in now, they're one and four for the season. Um, how are they going to ever come back from this, from this momentum? It's been a fourth losing streak for the CLS Knights Indonesia and their next game is still next year in January against the Chongsun Kung Fu. Chongsun Kung Fu and Kung Fu as you guys know uh, ABL fans basketball know that they are standing at 3-0 right now and uh, they're undefeated so about to face a candidate uh, a finals candidate as of right now is going to be a really tough chance for Coco Nugro and his squad uh, tonight, they've done all that they can to maintain the defense and to shoot lights out in the offense. But apparently, when when morale is down, when the turnovers are not going your way, it's just it's just demoralizing. And, and we see it tonight if you join us from the beginning of the game. But a good thing is it's a long break for this year. This is the last game for, this ye for the year for the CLS Knights Indonesia. They're not going to play again and almost in a month, so it's a good right. time for Coach Coco to gather up this team. So for the Corey Jones and also for Rudy Lingana to blend right. with the CLS Knights Indonesia. His chemistry is everything, but I think we may have some statistics that we want to show here right now. Um, if you're watching here on YouTube, on MNC Sports and Video.com, we are currently in Gorkartaja. We're coming to you live, and uh, man, the crowd is just just down devastated. they're devastated they're devastated they, they they knew coming in that they needed to win this they know that they're at home they had a chance to beat a team that was just recently beaten on their home turf against the eastern hong kong but apparently uh tonight it can't be converted and they're gonna come home thinking next year we're gonna go at it again yeah maybe there's no a uh, christmas gift for the <laughs> nice society tonight but you know what 
there's some potential for the CLS Knights still can make it for the playoff. Six team will will moving well, forward for the playoff. Right. But tonight, standing in the almost the bottom of the table with one victory with four losses, it's going to be a hard thing for the Knights to do if they want to move on to the playoffs. Yeah, it, take, it takes a tremendous amount of momentum to beat out of losing streak. Uh, it's not only demoralizing, but it, it gets to you of how your system has been working or not. And I know that since the beginning of the season with the the, the out of Duke Cruz, and, and uh, it, it's a real challenge with CLS Knights on their rookie season as they, they bring in other imports such as Evan Brock, who's not here tonight in replacement by DeCorey Aaron Jones. And you have Rudy Linganai, who is the adding depth in the backcourt. And you can see uh, the statistics right now. We're gonna show the statistics right now for the game summary. The rebounds have been in the favor of Singapore and as well, but not the assist. And you can see here that the free throws has improved over time from the first half and Singapore Slingers are shooting 60% by the end of the game. But the key for the Slingers is the turnover. They contain the turnover with just 15 turnovers against the CLS Knights with 24 to the Knights. So one thing for sure, the key player for the Singapore Slingers, the MVP, the most valuable player of the game for the Singapore Slingers is Xavier Alexander. But tonight, Xavier Alexander is together with Killy G with a special interview. Not yet. So, Xavier Alexander, 39 points. 39 points yeah. right here. 39 points, 16 rebounds, three steals and wow. three assists. Mr. Triple Double always scoring and always leading this is, in all statistics. This is a crazy number. 15 of 21, 71% from the field. Wow. 71. They haven't found a great matchup for Xavier Alexander. The Whoa. first meeting, it's Freddie Lish who's guarding Xavier Alexander all the way. This time, the Corey Jones still cannot stop Xavier Alexander dominating inside and outside. And tonight, Xavier Alexander is standby together with Anin, our on-court reporter for a special interview. Off to you, Anin. Hi guys, with me Anin Yaputri here. What a tight game today. So now I'm with Xavier from Singapore Slingers. Hello. Hello. And what did you expect the tight game from today's game? Uh, you know, my, my team started off slow. Um, but we just wanted to stick with it, you know, uh, continue to play hard on the defensive end. And, uh, you know, CLS, they're, they're a great team. I got a lot of friends on that team, so I knew it was going to be a close game. And in the first half, CLS leading, but then the second half, you guys catching up the team. And is there any, uh, what kind of instruction from your coach in the second half? Uh, you know, we started off slow, like I said, and we went in the locker room and, um, we just, we just wanted to stick with, with our game plan. Uh, we might have switched up a couple of defensive tactics, but we were able to be successful. Thank you, Xavier, for your time. You. I hope you guys will perform better in the next game. Thank you. Back to Gion and Ardo. All right, thank you, Anin. How come Xavier Alexander played the whole minutes, the whole game, but didn't even break a sweat? <laughs> It's, uh, that, that's, that's why it takes three years in the ABL. Um, you, you just know that uh, you're bumming and grinding and you know what it takes to be here in the ABL. So Xavier Alexander for sure is your MVP. And we can see that Xavier Alexander scoring 39 points, leading the Singapore Slingers also in rebounds with 16 rebounds and three assists. And Brian Williams, of course, also scored double-double 20 and 19. That's above the average that he normally does. Mari Wushang is at six assists. He's always going to be able to produce the dime, but unfortunately, the dimes did not bring the win tonight. So, unfortunately, the Knights Indonesia cannot break their losing streak. So, this is the last game of the, of the year, year for the CLS Knights Indonesia. They're trying to break this loss maybe next year. And for sure, it's a holiday season, yeah. but no holiday gift for the Knights Society. You know what, Ardo? I'm excited about next year me too me too and so we want to say thank you guys for joining us tonight 
AB, ABL 8 season. Um, live in Golkarta Jaya, I'm Ardo. My name is Dion Edward, and of course, we are going to see you real soon for more action. And we hope that CLS Knights will break their losing streak in the next game. So that's all for us. See you again next year. Merry Christmas if we cannot see you. So finally, my name is Dion Edward again with Ardo signing off the air. And salam olahraga. Good night.